Good morning, beloveds. Good morning, those of you who are in C2, those of you who are with us from near or far away. We're so grateful to be with you together in worship this morning. This morning, for those of you who couldn't be in the sanctuary because you're across the way, we welcomed our children to worship today. They just finished their music, art, and dance camp, C3 camp here at church. There were 40 children here this week who participated. And we all are so grateful to the parents for sharing their children this week. And we're especially grateful to Ra Rachel Carter Murphy. Uh, you usually see her singing up front, who was... Uh, both the um, inventor and the creator and the planner and the headmistress of this camp this week. Along with our music and fine arts ministry and staff, there were countless chefs and counselors and artists and snack makers who brought this beautiful week to life. It is worth pausing more than once in worship to give thanks for all who make it possible for our children's ministries to flourish. After worship today, we invite you to take a few moments in the narthex over on this side at the back are the uh, visual arts that the children created. So you'll be able to see their pictures and the, there are various kinds of media on the wall as well. As, and please remember to pray for those who work with our children as well as our children in this church. Today we're talking about created, being created and being creators, God the creator, created us in God's own image. God's studio and workshop is the church. Created in God's image, God formed us as creators that together we might change the world. Some time ago, theologian Dr. Francis Schaeffer taught that the greatest creativity ever given is the ability of humans by their choices to change the course of history. God gave humans that creativity, that that's our great dignity of humanity, that within the boundaries of all that God has made, God made room for us to create. The power to creatively transform and change the trajectory of this world. So I invite you, as we reflect on these words today, please pray with me as we ask God to illumine our creative path with light. God, you came to us as good news. In Christ, we are grateful. You created us in your own image as creator, and we're grateful. We're grateful for life and breath today to rise and to praise your name. Opened our eyes to see and our ears to hear your word just for us, just for today, that we might be artistically imagining and reimagining this world that you have made in alignment with your will and your way. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be an acceptable offering. You, O oh God, are our rock and our redeemer, and we're so grateful. Amen. There was an old farmer who wrote to his son who was in prison, who'd just gone to prison, and said, I'm sorry, son, but this year I'm not going to be able to plant the potato field because I can't really do it without you, you here to help me dig up the field and prepare it. The son felt really bad about it. He wrote back to his dad and, I, and said, Dad, whatever you do, don't dig up the field because that's where I buried the stolen money. So one of the prison guards intercepted that letter to the dad and gave it to the police. And the next day, the police went out and dug up the field. <laughs> and they told the prison guard, who then told the man... We didn't find the money. So then the man wrote a letter again to his dad and said, Dad, I hope you enjoy the field. That's the best I could do for you from here. <laughs> All week at the C3 camp, we've learned about how God's good news is expressed in the world through creativity. The children created visual arts and expressed their faith through prayer and song and dance. And while all of us express our creativity in some way, even a farmer's son from prison, our children express their creativity for sheer pleasure and for the glory of God. Today's message entitled Created Creative invites us to reflect on the God who created heavens and earth and created us in God's own image. We know that 
from the Gospel of John that our creativity expresses our faithfulness to the one who spoke the word and the word became flesh. And from the first book in Genesis all the way to Revelation at the end, the Alpha and the Omega is creating and creating still. In today's scripture, which in totality spans several long chapters of Exodus in the Old Testament, if we read the whole thing, we'd be here till about 2 o'clock. God commands the Hebrew people that are wandering in the wilderness for 40 years to build a traveling church, a tabernacle containing the Ark of the Covenant with the stone tablets and the Ten Commandments. They traveled for a long time by stages setting up encampments where they stayed for extended periods of time through long growing seasons, through the birth of children, the death of elders, until the last of the elders who remembered their suffering and slavery in Egypt had finally died. And then on the river bluff overlooking the promised land, Moses too laid down his life after long and faithful service to his God. Along the way, God commanded that an extravagant worship tent fully furnished with the finest craftsmanship be constructed. It would bind the community together and it would give them joy and hope in a really difficult time, a really long journey with no end in sight. The chapters in Exodus read like the historic records of a church's capital campaign. First, the resources had to be raised for the glory of God with an extensive record of the kinds of sacrificial offerings that were rendered. The people brought whatever they had, fine gold, bronze, linen, dyes, rare wood, their craftsmanship, their sewing and weaving skills. The entire tribe brought the best that they had for use by their most gifted artisans. We summarize the process, I know you're grateful, that was documented in such rich detail through today's reading. And when the tabernacle and the entire worship space were completed, when the Israelites, it says, had done everything just as the Lord had commanded, Moses, then Moses, blessed them. Moses blessed the people's faithfulness to God through their generosity of resources and their expression of the creative arts bringing together their best and their finest work to honor God, transported these wilderness people from their discouragement and their dismay and their grundling at their leader from time to time, Moses, why did you leave, lead us into the wilderness only to let us die? They were cut off from the oppression they left behind on the other side of the Red Sea, but they didn't yet see or imagine their future. Creative expression united them as a tribe and as a people and lifted their hearts and pointed it towards home. Our God-given human creativity and ingenuity changes the world. When we reflect on our world creatively and we partner with one another in community, we can do anything. The New Testament proclaims and affirms this in a variety of ways. We remember the words, I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is God's good news indeed, because we do face significant challenges right now in our personal lives and in the world. When faced with what seems like an insurmountable difficulty, God equips us from the beginning. We're wired that way with the gift of prayer and the capacity to creatively figure out a path forward. For example, these past several months, we've gathered here at the church for a creative conversation about our local affordable housing crisis. This ad hoc group of church members, leaders of area nonprofits and local elected government officials co collaborated on ways to move the needle on affordable housing. Because this issue increasingly impacts all of us. Here in Indian River County, the number of people who work full time for a living yet struggle to find and keep affordable housing significantly increased since COVID. Their rent in many cases has doubled 
And with increased taxes and insurance for those who own homes, many who own them can no longer afford to stay in them. These unparalleled increases in housing costs have been met with marginal increases, if any, in pay. Exceptions, of course. And I suspect that those of you who are participating today online may experience similar challenges in the communities where you live. We've heard it said that in our post-COVID world, people aren't willing to work. How many of you have heard that? People just don't want to work anymore. A lot of you have heard that. There's help wanted signs posted all over town. Now, while this issue is complicated, and for some people, find they found that working from home is more satisfying than working in the office, and yet affordable housing remains a root cause. That same worker who for five years, 10 years, 20 or more worked in our community in retail or hospitality, the health or the education industry now find they can no longer afford to live in the community where they serve. So that same worker moves 15 miles away to an affordable house or apartment and then with the rising cost in gas, finds a job in that community that will not require them to pay the additional gas costs to get back and forth to work. It's not that people don't want to work, it's that they can't afford to work here. So local leaders brainstormed multiple creative ways to address this issue. While that full discussion is beyond the scope of this Sunday morning message, I'll share with you that the, the incredible energy emerged through proposed creative solutions and the growth of collaborative relationships. Ideas included the formation of a community land trust to stabilize development costs and a change in building codes to make it easier for more than one family to share an existing home. The Veterans Administration already has such a program that matches veterans with homeowners. They match up personalities and the needs to help the lower the costs and provide companionship for both parties. The creative juices were flowing last week when one church member met a man who creates affordable housing in another part of the country. He asked how he did it. That man purchases and outfits railroad cars as a dwelling for about $85,000 a piece. Even with the cost of a developed lot, that puts home ownership within reach. Others are invested in the tiny house movement in, in many communities that provide safe, affordable housing for those in need of it. Early in my tenure here as minister, we had an opening here on staff, and I knew someone from far away with whom I used to work and invited them to apply for the job. When they discovered that their housing would cost them much more and their pay would be less than where they were now, they declined the position they couldn't afford to move here. You see, whether we're creating big brother and big sister programs for mentoring or figuring out how to create space for underserved youth to play basketball, go to school, God wired us with imagination, faith, and the will to risk something new, something great, to create something magnificent to change the world. But you know what? Artistic efforts require talent and time and training. Often I overhear someone rightfully thanking our musicians for their extraordinary contributions to worship. I'm lifted and buoyed every week by the music in this church as you are. Someone will say to one of them, you have a natural gift. Yes, they do. And at one time, a fifty dollars to $100,000 bill for music education, and then the instrument, and then their internships, and then lengthy apprenticeships. We're all creatively gifted in some way. Yet development of our creativity exacts a cost. It's said that it takes 10,000 hours to master a craft. I don't know how long it took to create cost crossover, but I bet a lot of hours, right? You've probably heard of this 10,000-hour rule, which was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell's blockbuster book, Outliers. As Gladwell tells it, the rule goes like this. It takes 10,000 hours of intensive practice to achieve mastery of many complex skills and materials like playing the violin. 
We've, been, we, we've become accustomed to pushing the easy button. If we can't get an instant answer on the internet or it takes real work over a long time, we tend to think it's not worth the trouble and we give up. Songwriter, uh, the late songwriter Leonard Cohen once talked about the challenges of any creative process in this way. The creative process is like a bear stumbling into a beehive or a honey cache. I'm stumbling right into it and getting stuck, and it's delicious, and it's horrible, and I'm in it, and it's not very graceful, and it's awkward, and sometimes it's very painful. This process is inevitable for anything creative. So when you think about the great issues confronting us today, it appears that what we need most are not greater politicians, but seasoned and faithful creatives willing to go the distance. Few things are achieved without sacrifice. So when you think about whatever that big thing is that you're passionate about, you may find times when you feel critical about those who are trying to figure out what to do next. Oh no, do it this way and not that. But for those of us not willing to put in the 10,000 hours to move the needle, we can pray for them. We can pray for them to have the vision and the courage to hold the course until they reach the goal and the world changes. Now, there are notable exceptions to how difficult creativity can be. During the summer of 1904, an unlikely partnership formed at the World's Fair in St. Louis. The summer was unusually hot, not unlike this one, and people searched the fair for a way to cool off. A vendor named Arnold provided just what they needed, homemade ice cream. People lined up for what seemed like miles to get some of this smooth and cool and satisfying ice cream, but there was one problem. It was so hot that Arnold ran out of paper serving bowls due to the high demand. Now, right next to Arnold's ice cream booth was a man named Ernest, who was a pastry chef. He made a Persian wafer dessert. Ernest also had a problem. His pastry was not selling. So Ernest noticed Arnold's problem, took some warm pastry, rolled it into a cone shape, and then went over and showed Arnold how the cone could hold a scoop of ice cream. On that hot day at the World's Fair in St. Louis more than 100 years ago, imagination and partnership birthed the ice cream cone. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> the world profoundly needs our creative and artistic imagination right now, grounded in faith and partnered in community to turn a few things right side up that have gone all cattywampus. God called the Israelites long ago to sacrificially lean in and create something enduring and beautiful to sustain them through an uncertain time. God calls us still. Whether we can write poetry or paint or sculpt or design buildings or imagine a different future or help with our resources to make it possible, God counts on us to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes without counting the cost to set things right. This may be difficult, yet through faith, all things really are possible. As Christians, we are the artists of our collective lives. Created in God's image, we bear the earthly imprint of the Creator. Whether you're a painter or a potter, a mathematician, a scientist, or an engineer, God urges us to live artistically. Creatively observe the world and all that is in it, and we experiment together with fresh ways to make the light shine. May it be so. This is God's good news. Amen.